Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Voices of New York City and same sweater become kind of a uniform but another lovely fantastic guest. Remy Germinario is an outstanding artist, a wonderful human being and a sweetheart. Oh. So, Hi, it's so good to see you. Thank you for having me. Likewise, and you know, it's always a pleasure. Remy is the reason why I keep visiting the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island so many times. More than two years ago, I answered to an ad that were requiring tour guides. I showed up, he liked my show, and it all took from there. Has it been two years already? That's crazy. Oh, yes, sir. Actually, more than two years because it was the very beginning of the summer. So, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, you're you're a fantastic tour guide, and it was a, a pleasure to to bring you on. Oh, you, you see, you see, paying all these guys is, is, is a fantastic thing. You you give them money, they tell you so many beautiful things about yourself. But <laughs> aside from the bribery, <laughs> tell us a little bit. I'm not ab I am not. I'm not above bribery for compliments. It's fine. No, 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 it's fine. Everybody's got a price. So, you know, I'm perfectly fine. Uh -huh. you know? Hey, tough times, you know. Uh... <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're originally from, whether you're an original New Yorker or somebody who moved to New York, which makes an even stronger New York, New Yorker, what you're doing in life and in general, you know, the mighty question. Has New York given to you what you've given to the city? Oh my goodness, what a, a layered question. Well, I'll try to answer all of those. So I am originally from uh, Tampa, Florida, or as I say, Trampa, Florida. Sorry, Tampa. Uh, but um, so I'm not a, a native New Yorker. However, my dad is um, born and raised in Long Island. So I have New York blood in me, even though um, I wasn't I wasn't born here. But I I'm originally from Tampa, Florida, so that's where I started um, getting into acting. Whether it was more of a community theater thing, and then eventually more of a professional thing, and high school and everything. And um, I always wanted to move to New York, especially in high school um, when I really started uh, becoming enamored with Broadway and musicals. And, you know, my dad would take me up to visit his side of the family in New in Long Island. And then we would take trips into the city. Um, I fell in love with it. And I, uh, every, you know, every weekend and I would always do like research on New York city. Specifically, I wanted to go to NYU. Um, like that was my number one school to go to for acting. And I would just research all of the classes and the curriculum and the clubs and the dorms. And it was my number one choice. And I kind of put all my eggs in one basket, which was risky. And I, I, only, I only applied to four, four colleges. Um, three were kind of like very safety schools and NYU was like the number one. And I did early decision for NYU and thankfully got in. So it worked, it worked out okay. Um, so yeah, I moved to New York when I was 18 years old, um, 2008. Uh, so I, in September, no, August, was my 12 year anniversary in New York City. And it's really trippy um, to think that I've lived here this long. It really does feel like, it's a weird thing. Like it feels like just yesterday I moved here as a little, you know, bright eyed and bushy tail, fresh off the bus, uh, 18 year old, ready to conquer New York City and, um, and everything. But it also feels like a whole other life when I first moved here. Um, it's hard to think of a life before New York City, you know, it feels like a, a dream life before New York City. And it's well, because, you know, the city's so fast paced things. Time moves faster here. It really does uh, in New York City. So it just feels like a whole other world. But yeah, I, I've lived here 12 years. Um, what were the other questions? I forgot. <laughs> Has New York given you what you've given to the city besides the rent, of course? Mm, that's a really tough question. I, I, that is a tough question. Yes and no. Um, I think New York has given me a whole, whole lot. Um, and I think that people who come to New York City, uh, especially transplants to New York City, come to New York, whether they're an actor, 
whether they're uh, a doctor, whether they're in advertising. You know, when you choose to come to New York City, you automatically have very lofty goals, right? Because you have to succeed at, at a decent rate in order to even just pay rent in mm -hmm. New York City. It's a cutthroat city, right? There are, you know, eight, 0.59 million people crammed into these five boroughs, all fighting for that New York kind of success and that New York, um, New York thing. So in a way, I have given a lot to New York City and it's given me a lot back. It's given me incredible experiences in terms of opportunities for my career. It's allowed me to meet all different kinds of people, whether they're my close friends, whether they're their work colleagues, whether they're um, people I work with on a creative and collaborative level. And also, I've been able to immerse myself in all different kinds of cultures um, that I probably wouldn't have got. So in terms of like an enriching cultural and intellectual growth, 100% New York has given me that. But also, it's fully met its expectations of it um, being, a, a, it's a hard city to live in. You know, it, it can be, it's exhausting. We climb a lot of stairs. We walk a lot. My body hurts a lot. And New York, despite how many people are in it, can be a very lonely and isolating city. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, many people deal with that. And uh, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of the, um, as much as New York can give you success, it can also give you failures. But I also think it's a sign of a true New Yorker how you handle the the failures and the hardships that new york throws at you yeah most of the time it's not the thing itself it's the way you react to things that really really makes a difference totally and i think um it kind of separates those who really thrive in the city i mean look at this pandemic i know a lot of people who moved yeah. because for many people, there's a time to come to New York and there's a time to leave. And I think that, like, it's almost like it's, uh, do you know the term rumspringa? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's not the same thing. You know, it's the Amish of the Mennonites. They have that, like, moment to go and explore the world and then come back to, like, a year or something. I feel like for many people, New York is their own kind of rumspringa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really for many, it's like you come, many in like their 20s and 30s, just like see what that's like, and then you leave and you do something else. And for many people, the pandemic was kind of like the last straw. They were like, okay, I was sort of on the way out anyway. But I think despite that, New York is not dead. You know, look, Thank God. no, no, not at all. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound negative when talking no, about- No, 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 like, absolutely. I, I'm an advocate of New it, York is still alive, fight me, you know? Oh, wow. Well, 100%. I mean, look at all of the people eating outdoors, uh, social distancing in restaurants, right? I, I live in Harlem and um, in a more kind of residential area, but near kind of like trendy restaurants and cafes and everything. And before the pandemic, like even on a weekend, you could walk up to most of the restaurants, even the trendier restaurants in my area, and you could get a table right away. During the pandemic, even sometimes on a weekday, with just as many seats outside as there used to be inside, there's sometimes an hour long, if not more, wait at these restaurants. So seeing everyone enjoying that and, and walking through parks and seeing more people than ever in parks. Look at all of the, the videos and pictures people were taking uh, at, at, when people were doing early voting the past few days. The lines wrapped around the voting locations like three times. Um, there are outdoor comedy shows happening. I've done several outdoor comedy shows. There's outdoor concerts. We've made the most of it. Sure, have some businesses shut down? Yeah, and it's really sad. We have definitely dealt with some negative effects of the pandemic. It's not the same no. as it used to be. We miss Broadway. You know, we, we, you know, we miss the way things were, but New York is by no means dead. You know, we worked for several hundred years to become the metropolis we are. It's not going to just go away. Exactly, exactly. I totally agree with you. And it's interesting, you're saying you're living in Harlem, because, you know, a very well diffused idea, especially among people visiting New York for the first time, is that the city actually ends uh, 
at the northern end of Central Park. Please help me tell them that there is a whole universe uptown, which somehow is even more beautiful than what yeah. you find downtown or especially midtown. I think Harlem has some of the most beautiful architecture in all of Manhattan. The brownstones you walk by. There, I, I live a, a few blocks away from this house. It's a mansion um, that used to be uh, owned by, um, uh, oh God, it's either, oh God, bad tour guy, uh, but uh, it, it, it's by the, the Ringling Brothers. It's either, it's not Barnum, but it's either Ringling or Bailey, Barnum and Bailey. Yeah. I think it's Bailey. And, and if I don't, you recall correctly, you're not that far away from Striva Row as well. You know, all those things. From about where? Striva Row, 139th Street, and all that beautiful houses right there. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Um, so Harlem's really great. I mean, look, Harlem is definitely more residential than, um, than more touristy parts of New York City. But it's such a, I always, when I was tour guiding, recommended people to go to Harlem just because it's still Harlem, you know, Harlem, especially people have been living here for decades and decades, their families, several generations of people were, you know, born and raised in this area. And that's what I love about it. It's still residential, you know, you, it's, it's a neighborhood, it's a community. You know, when I moved to Harlem for the first time ever, people said hello to me. I know my neighbor's names. People know my dog. Like I walk around on the street and I literally everyone I was like, hey, sandwich, that's my dog's name. Um, who wouldn't? You know, so, you know, who I would? love him. I love him. Um, but, you know, it's it's people maybe avoid it just because they don't they don't have it. It's not like a huge site here. There's not a big tourist attraction here. Um, the history is potentially a little bit more niche for visitors, but. I think it's equally as important. Harlem's history was such a huge part of the backbone of New York City and representing the many cultures that make up the people of New York. So I, I love Harlem, I really do. You're absolutely correct. Plus there are these very high contrasts within a couple of blocks. I'm thinking about St. Nicholas and 160th Street, you know, the Sylvan Terrace, the, yeah. the, the Jumel Mansion and... Uh, I love the Jumel Mansion. That beautiful row of uh, wooden houses. Exactly. And uh, right before them, you, you access that place only by stepping on a few steps. Uh, and when you're there, on St. Nicholas 160s, you are in the middle of a place that looks uh, a little not so well. Then you simply make a 180 turn and you're in the middle of heaven. You know, that, that, that's yeah. the thing about, about Yeah, Harlem. Yeah, Harlem's, Harlem's wonderful. There's like, I discovered like a nature trail in my, like at the start of the pandemic, there's this like beautiful nature trail that goes to High Bridge um, mm -hmm. that you feel like you're in nature. It's crazy. Um, and I'm, I'm constantly discovering new things, which is neat. I, this is not the same thing, but... Mm -hmm. Talking about like niche history that's equally as important, but maybe not as populated. Um, just because, you know, New York, people go to the big attractions. That's what happens in any city. For me personally, as a history nerd and an avid traveler, uh, I love going to the smaller places. Like, for example, the other day, I was bored, as one is in pandemic times. And I was like, I want to take a walk somewhere, but I want to go... Um, someplace I haven't been. I've been to a lot of the niche places. I keep saying niche. Take a shot every time I say niche. <laughs> um, I've been going to, a, I've gone to a lot of the really smaller nooks and crannies of New York just because I'm a nerd and I've lived here a long time and I like being a tourist in my own city. But I, I was like just Googling like places to walk in New York. And um, one of the things that came up was Grand Concourse in the Bronx. Ooh, 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 and I, I and I, I and I'm kind of like walking distance to it um, in a way. And so it's like, oh, that sounds fun. And it's, and I've kind of been to Grand Concourse, like when I would go to like Yankee Stadium or something, like I've been in the vicinity, but I haven't like really immersed myself. It's like five miles long. It's one of the largest, widest thoroughfares in New York. 
in the 1800s when they built it, it was modeled after the Chandelier exactly. um, in Paris. And there's all this like art deco architecture. Um, uh, there's just a bunch of like little tiny things that you wouldn't think to go to. Um, and it was really cool because there was this mixture of history. And then I saw the, the real people living here, you know, the, 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 the people that tourists don't really get to see which I thought was cool to see all the shops that were there, these local New York shops. And then at the very end of it, like just so specific is a cottage that Edgar Allan Poe lived in. Yeah. You, you know what? Except the Grand Concourse. You should go there in the summertime. You start from Yankee Stadium, 161st Street. And Some, you're yeah. walking all the way to Fordham, 180th yeah. Street or something. It's full of, uh, you know, plants, flowers. It's yeah. Marvel. I always say, if I actually blindfolded people and then I take the blindfold off the rice and say, where are we? They would say probably in one of the most luxury places in Manhattan. They wouldn't yeah. ever, ever think they're in the Bronx. I know. It's true. And not to mention, I, don't, I wouldn't even think they were, I, if they were blindfolded, I wouldn't even think they would think they were in Manhattan because it's so wide. I personally have never seen a more wide oh, yeah. thoroughfare. E even Broadway doesn't go that far across. Oh, it no, is, no. it's very, very big, it, you know, and, and how, because Broadway is the longest thoroughfare in New York City from the top of Manhattan to the bottom of Manhattan, right? But it's not as wide as Grand Concourse is, so. Mm -hmm. um, but, but there's something interesting now that just popped into my mind. So if yeah. Germinale had the possibility to choose exactly where he wants to live in New York, where would you live? Then I will tell you where I would live. I would love to hear where you would love to live. My ideal place, if money were not an issue, uh, which it is, <laughs> um, would be uh, Greenwich Village, the West Village. Um, I have a very uh, important connection to, to the village. In theory, I mean, not in theory, it was the first place I ever lived in New York City because that's where NYU is, where I went to college, and that's where my first dorm was. So I always joke that, so I stayed in the cheapest dorm in NYU. It had no air conditioning three people in one small room, no kitchen, no nothing. And it wasn't very beautifully decorated. I loved it though. And I live, it was the cheapest dorm that NYU had to offer, but it has the fanciest address, uh, which is 35 Fifth Avenue. Woo! So yes. my, first, my first apartment in New York City was a Fifth Avenue apartment. Um, no, but I, I just, because the village was the first neighborhood that I, I lived in in New York and it's where I kind of grew up, in a way, it's it's the neighborhood where I became adult an adult in my college years. College years they're very formative, oh, yeah. you know. They it's where you discover a lot about yourself and you have all these new experiences. So it was sort it just sort of represents New York to me mm -hmm. because that was my first insight. I love the Bohemian culture. I, I I'm especially obsessed with like the 1960s, all the folk music and just the vibes that come with that era, and you really feel transported. Um, in the village to that kind of um, bohemian, hippie, um, nomad kind of time. And the architecture is beautiful. Um, the culture, restaurants, um, bars, it's just, it has everything. And it's just quintessential New York to me. Where would you live? Okay, it's in a complete different neighborhood. The good thing- Staten is Island? No, sir, way up north. The good thing is that if I took the train, it would take me 20 minutes to reach Grand Central Terminal. But I would give a month of my life to be able to move to Wave Hill in the Bronx. Where is that? Oh, uh, I knew. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna Google Maps it while you, while you talk about it. Okay, it's in the very Wave Wave Hill. Wave Hill, Hill, as in an ocean wave. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, hold on, let me look this up. The very, very northern part of the Bronx, left, going north, left of the Henry Hudson Parkway, more or less in line with Van Cortland Park, in between 246 and 260th Street, so way, way, way up north. 
and it's a marvelous, marvelous place. It has the oh. bourbon okay. vibe with all yeah. beautiful, beautiful villas. Not, not that they're fancy so much about villas, but, but you know, it's a very relaxed place. People would never, ever think mm -hmm. they're still in the city. 20 minutes to Grand Central, and the, the railway station is fantastic because it's exactly along the river. So you can cool. see all the river, then it changes, gets back to east on Marble Hill, and yeah, Harlem, and then finally Grand Central. My wife says, it's a wonderful place, go there alone. So, you know, we're still negotiating this. But. That's funny, that's funny, that's cool. I'm, I might have to, on my next little nerdy niche outing, I might have to go there. Oh, I will gladly take you there. I, I, I know the, the area pretty well, you know. Will you, give, will you give me a friends and family tour discount? Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. That's cool. I love how specific that answer was. Um, you know, it's incredible how long people live here. And there's always something new to see historically. You know, and I think that's what makes New York so special. It's, again, we're five boroughs, nine million people in this small space, and it's still growing and things are changing. And um, I mean, there's still parts of New York that I've just never seen, even, even in Manhattan. There's sometimes I walk on a street in Manhattan, maybe just in a neighborhood that I, I don't frequent often for whatever reason I'm there, and I'm walking and I'm just like, you know what? I don't think I've ever walked on this street before. Oh, yeah. You Even know what I'm living now. Whenever I tell people the area I'm living now, nobody has the slightest idea where I do live. <laughs> ah, well, that's good. We don't want to put your address on on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, do you think you know with all this gossip, because that's how I call it, about this city becoming absolutely unsafe, uh, crime rate going up? Do you still think New York? is still a safe place to live if you use common sense of course but in general i would say in my case i haven't seen anything really changing where i do live now but you know i may be mistaken because of yeah that. you know i i think it's still very safe you know i think in my opinion even no matter where you are you should always be cautious, whether it's in an urban area, in a rural area, anywhere in the world, oh, yeah. whether it's known for being safe or unsafe, you should always, always, always be cautious. You know, I think it's all, all relative. I mean, the, the nicest neighborhood in New York City, there could be something bad that happens there. The nicest neighborhood in another city, in, in somewhere else in another state, it could be dangerous. So I don't think that the pandemic necessarily caused the city to get less safe. I think it's a strange time right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think a great example of that is, is the, um, oh God, this might get, this might get intense, but I'll say it. All right. The Black, Li the Black Lives Matter protests. You know, I went to several and every single one I went to um, was very peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people, unfortunately, are attributed, people who don't understand, are attributing the Black Lives Matter movement as the reason that cities are becoming unsafe, which is actually not true, in my opinion. For the most part, it, it, from a lot I've seen, a lot of the violence and unsafeness of those protests has not come from the protesters. I'll just say that. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. You know, you can say whatever you want, right? Yeah. So in conclusion, I think New York is still very safe. And, you know, it's, I, I, I think, I, I bring up the Black Lives Matter protests as an example, just because the, they were very New York to me, because New York is a very accepting um, city for all different kinds of people. And uh, in my opinion, I mean, obviously people do, I think New York City is probably the least discriminatory, 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 one of the more less discriminatory places in the world, just because we are so accepting and there are so many different kinds of people. So the Black Lives Matter protests, it felt very alive just because we were all focused on this one really important issue 
at hand and we all came together and we were all safe. Everyone was wearing masks. And, you know, you talk about the city being dead. See, being at those protests, like how alive it was. There wasn't, there wasn't um, pride this year, but there was a, a march, you know, for that was in kind of a combination with pride and uh, Black Lives Matter that it, it, we, there might as well have been pride. We were, it was so exciting and it all ended at Stonewall and there were, there were like, people had like little floats and everything. It was, even though pride was canceled, it, it wasn't. Um, so, considering you have spent 60% of your life in New York. Are you, oh God. Yeah, I, 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 quickly, I quickly did the math. I'm sorry. I didn't think of, no, it's okay. You're just making me you're feel older. For something, I'm a nerd for something else, you know? But the question wow. is- you're making me feel old. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and I'm just about 67% older than you are. So please cut it out, you know? <laughs> Hadn't you lived 60% of your life here, would Remy Germinario be the same today? If I hadn't? Yes. No, definitely not. Um, I mean, as far back as college, like it, it's all a, um, a domino effect, mm -hmm. you know, because I went to college here, I made connections in terms of my friends and people in the industry, which then led me to getting jobs after college, right? And the connections that came with that. And having learned a lot in college, it lent me to like developing other skills that I didn't have beforehand. And just being in New York City is educational. So NYU's slogan is that they are in and of the city, right? So obviously going to college itself is educational, but then being in the city is also just equally as part of that education. So that little seed of me coming to college here was the domino effect for everything else that has happened in my life that is, has led me to speaking to you okay. at this very moment. You know what I mean? Like my senior year of college, I was a tour guide for um, the college. Like I would show prospective students and that experience plus my love of theater when I saw the ad for a Broadway tour guide, I, I think I, beca I became a tour guide in 2013. So about a year or so after college, I started becoming a tour guide as my, my kind of side hustle there. Um, because I had that experience, it then led me to getting this job, which was the most consistent job I had ever, being a tour guide for six years which then allowed me, it was so flexible with acting. Yes. So I was able to, so I was able to pursue uh, acting and everything while feeling financially stable. Many actors as they're kind of trying to get their, their foot in the door, they struggle because they get a job where either it doesn't pay as much as they'd like or it's not flexible. So because I was able to have those two worlds, they kind of enhanced each other. So, you no, know, I'm a very long-winded person. I talk too much. No, I would, not, I would not be the same person I am today without having lived in New York. This, this very young sweetheart is, is famous for burning the candle at both hands. You could see him, you know, stay up late after a stand-up comedy show or something, and he was always the first one on the early gig at the Statue of Liberty. Whenever yeah. Randy Ram, there's no way to book the 8.30 gig. Everybody goes on the 9.30. Remy is always, always the first one. What's your... Uh, I, I used to be, at least. <laughs> okay, we will start again. Don't worry. Man. I, you know what? I will say this, though. Not having tour guided for eight months now because of the pandemic, my voice is in tip-top shape. <laughs> I, I would listen, I was recently listening to recordings of myself, even just speaking back when I was like giving, you know, 10 tours a week sometimes, and I sounded awful. <laughs> you know, I don't have like a very big booming voice, so I always lost my voice as a tour guide. And I mean, I'm, I, my singing range has increased in the past eight months. How many octaves do you have? How many what? Octaves. 
in your voice? Oh God, I'm not, I'm not like a very high singer. I think I have two octaves. Yeah, more, more or less. My top, my, my, my money note is a, is a G. Oh, if that makes sense. Okay. I don't know. Oh, it totally, it totally does. I can go as high as B flat if, if I really. Okay. Oh, yeah, but yeah. If you really, if you really, uh, uh, uh use your diaphragm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, those days it seems long gone. What What are you working on now? What's your dim, dream project? Two different questions. Sure. Great. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to make the most out of the pandemic uh, and be as creative as I can within my limits. I, I've, I've had a few creative things. Um, so it, that have sometimes paid, <laughs> uh, which is nice, you know, because a lot of people are creating a lot of their own work in the pandemic, you know, for social media, they're creating web series or podcasts or interview shows or sketch videos, you know, I know several people who have shot to social media fame through the pandemic because a, a friend of mine started doing an impression uh, of an actress that he just kind of rolled with it. And he went, he went from having a few thousand followers to I think like 35,000 followers Ooh. because of that. So uh, what I've been working, I've done a lot of like uh, readings of plays throughout the pandemic. Um, I, uh, I, I used to be on <laughs> pre-pandemic on the house sketch team at UCB on mod night. And I've been able to work with my sketch team. Mm -hmm. So we've made um, some video sketches together. Um, we have a one airing tonight, actually, we a Halloween sketch, um, which is fun. Uh, I'm part of a new, this is exciting, a new um, musical podcast radio play. Wow. And this is really this is really cool. You should listen to it. So it, it is called The World to Come. And it's available on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you can get a podcast. And it's it, I worked with collaborators. I worked with a lot. Uh, it's directed by Rachel Klein, uh, written by Eric Ransom, and uh, the music and the arrangements were done by Andy Peterson. And they had this idea to write a 12 episode musical radio play that's um, kind of loosely inspired by the pandemic. It takes place a hundred like centuries after the pandemic when there's no internet, no, no pop culture, and it's kind of a post-apocalyptic world, um, but it's a, it's a comedy. So it's a dark comedy. So it has, it's very campy um, and wink, wink, nudge, nudge at itself. And it's, um, it's kind of Game of Thrones. So it takes place in what was New York City, mm. but it's called, five, it's called Five Borough now. And it's about the leaders of each of the boroughs trying to gain power. Um, so uh, like Staten Island, the, the family that runs that is called the Snookies. Oh. Uh, and the people in the Bronx, they're led by the um, uh, Escandalistas, I think that's what they're called. So I am the leader of what was Manhattan. Um, so it, my character's name is Jasper Knickerbocker. And I kind of talk like there, you see. I'm kind of an old timer. I really like the old Hollywood movies. So it's all about how these people fight for power in this post-apocalyptic world and how each of the factions worships a different set of pop culture icons that are no longer there because of the pandemic. So that's been really fun, the world to come. Uh, and then I just actually wrapped just yesterday uh, a short film. Um, which hopefully will be circulating the festival circuit um, in the next few months. So, yeah. That's fabulous. And I really see you as Mr. Knickerbocker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. It's very, oh. yes, it's very campy, very fun, that podcast. Um, and yeah, I've been doing a bunch of um, outdoor comedy shows as well through Stand Up New York, which is like my main comedy club. So I'm very grateful to have been at least a little creatively. But the thing about the world to come, we all did this remotely. So we all recorded our music, our lines remotely, and these incredible sound uh, engineers put it all together. Oh um, it's wow. bananas, you should listen to it. It's really good. Of course I will, of course. I yeah. Will. That, that, that's the good thing also about these interviews, because I got to, to keep the pace, you know, with all of you, what all yeah. of you are doing. And, uh, and it's lovely, and it's always a vibrant and cultural scene in this city. So 
totally. Yeah. And so it's amazing how much we can do from the comfort of our own homes now. Oh, yes. What's your final message to all the people looking forward to coming back to New York or to as a tourist or even moving to New York? Sure. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing to say is that New York is not dead. Um, New York, New York has laid the foundation, right? The city itself, um, the reputation precedes itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think what everyone should know about New York, whether they're a tourist, first of all, if you're a tourist, be safe. If you're coming from a quarantine state, be sure to quarantine before you take tours. <laughs> uh, but we have to be safe right now, you know, not only for New Yorkers, but also for um, tour guides and for yourself. New York was the center of this pandemic yeah. for a very long time, right? And look what happened. We're now doing fairly well. We've done pretty well. Um, with ourselves and we really want to maintain that so i think people need to be safe when traveling here in terms of the pandemic but just know that new york is constantly evolving new york is different now right this pandemic has changed many 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 places so new york is a slightly different place but the foundations are still there and the the uh hope for new york continual growth is the people within it yeah right i i read i read an article or something, I'm going to misquote it, but I thought it was really important. The people who have left New York, you talked about, has New York given me what I've given it? The people who have left New York, they were the people that were taking from New York and not giving anything back, right? Oh, and, the second, and the second New York stopped giving them what they wanted, they left, right? But New York, it is about that give and take, right? So the people who are thriving here are the people that are giving just as much as they're taking from New York City, if that makes sense. Oh, um, total sense. Yeah. So just uh, my, I guess my, my final thought is that New York is here, it's evolving, it is different, and it's up to the inhabitants and the visitors that come to um, lend a hand in that new evolution, this new stage of New York City. Yeah. So, once again, thank you so very much, Remy, for answering. Thank my... you. You've all got the opportunity to meet this fantastic guy. And um, looking forward to seeing you again in person, either going yes. to Wave Hill or <laughs> anywhere else. We'll go, to, we'll go to Wave Hill. I would love a, a personal tour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you so very much. All the best and see you soon.